Hi, I'm Andrew Francis, and this is chapter 15 from Mission on the Outside. It's called A Sinful Woman's Testimony. From John chapter 4, verses 39 to 40, we read, Many Samaritans from that town believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me all that I ever did. So when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay with them, and he stayed there two days. Fulfilling Jesus' words concerning the readiness of the harvest, we are told in verse 39 that the people of the town believed in him simply on the basis of the woman's testimony. As I keep on reminding us, this woman was someone with the past, a woman who was collecting water in the middle of the day to avoid prying eyes and nasty words. Yet despite all of this, when she comes back with the story about a bloke who told her everything she ever did, the Samaritan villagers were willing to believe her. This, of course, stands in stark contrast to the Jewish religious leaders who refused to countenance belief in Jesus even when miracles took place before their very eyes. One only need think of the story of the healing of the man born blind. He was first questioned, along with his parents, by the Pharisees as to whether he was actually blind, and secondly, as to the identity of the one who healed him. Even he, a presumably uneducated man who had probably suffered terribly from his disability, could see through the Pharisees' intransigence. I love the way that he ends up becoming quite sarcastic with them. The Pharisees refuse to acknowledge that there may indeed have been something of God in what happened, and that Jesus was at the very least a prophet, as evidenced by his ability to heal. Hear something of this conversation as reported in the Gospel of John. He answered, I have told you already, and you did not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you want to become his disciples too? Then they hurled insults at him and said, You are this fellow's disciple? We are disciples of Moses. We know that God spoke to Moses. But as for this fellow, we don't even know where he comes from. The man answered, Now, that is remarkable. You don't know where he comes from, yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners. He listens to the godly person who does his will. Nobody has ever heard of opening the eyes of a man born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. To this they replied, You are steeped in sin at birth. How dare you lecture us? And they threw him out. A little bit later in John's Gospel, after Jesus raises Lazarus from the dead, the chief priests and Pharisees respond by calling a meeting to plot to kill Jesus. Why is it that time and time again, it is the people of God, whether Israelite or Christian, who seem most determined to stand against the revelation of God and even God's final word spoken to us in his son Jesus? And again, why is it that all too often in both the Old and New Testaments that outsiders and people considered accursed willingly believe and put their faith in the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob or his Messiah Jesus, whether it be the prostitute Rahab or one of the accursed Moabites, Ruth, whether it be the people of the pagan city Nineveh or the Syrophoenician woman who, gave, who Jesus gave every good reason not to believe. And yet, along with the Samaritan woman and many in her village, outsiders castigated and looked down on by God's people are spoken of as receptive vessels for God's word in Jesus. But this is not all. It is also evident that at this point that not everyone in the village believed. Many would have had good reason for skepticism concerning this potential Messiah and a Jewish one at that. And yet these villagers are not only willing to have Jesus stay amongst them, but urge him to come and stay with them. This is a village hungry for truth. The people are willing to put aside their concerns regarding the character of this woman, and they are willing to put aside any cultural or racial bigotry they might feel towards Jesus when they invite him to stay with them. The woman, just like the disciples of Jesus, were told to do in Luke 10, had gone before him to prepare the way for his coming. The disciples had been told by Jesus to go ahead of him to every town and place where he was about to go. The woman had also gone ahead. The town welcomed her testimony and then welcomed the one of whom she testified. 